Welcome back to Cook at Home with Chef Cook. Today we're going to be making a chicken dish. Uh, it has a lot of Italian flares to it, so it's going to be wrapped with prosciutto. It's going to be stuffed with a sun-dried tomato pesto. Uh, we'll be serving it with some asparagus uh, that we're going to peel and the reasons why we're going to peel it, um, as well as some orzo pasta that we're going to be toasting off ahead of time to get some nutty aromas and flavors going on there. So let's get started. As always, we'll have the recipe written down as well as the QR code at the top that'll take you straight to this video. In the kit, we're going to have some arugula greens. This is a sun-dried tomato pesto, a little balsamic reduction, some Parmesan cheese, a couple yellow baby tomatoes, a little pure ground black pepper, some kosher salt, a little pat of butter, some extra virgin olive oil, some prosciutto that's been sliced, a chicken breast, and then this is orzo pasta. And then the last thing is some asparagus spears. Let's get a lot of our prep done before the chicken gets onto the board. So the first thing we're going to do is the asparagus. Asparagus has a lot of different sizes to them. This one here is a large asparagus. A lot of times when you have the asparagus, it's a little bit woody on the exterior. So what we're going to do is peel down the exterior on all these. Um, if you have asparagus that's a little bit longer, you can snap it off and it breaks at the most tender part. Uh, but if you want them all the same size, what I tend to do is line all the tops up and then I cut across uh, the base to get them all the same size. So we're going to peel the asparagus. Uh, we're gonna use this Kun Rikon peeler that I mentioned before in one of the previous videos. I'll put the name up on the video so that you can see how it's spelled. It's a Swiss company, fantastic peelers, very inexpensive. These are the only peelers that I use. Um, so you wanna start more towards the top and you're just gonna go straight down. So you're, not, you're only getting rid of minimal amounts of the exterior and you're exposing that nice internal softer flesh. So this is how it should look as far as the asparagus is concerned. So we're gonna do that to the rest of these. And then once you have it like this, you're gonna have all these peelings. These peelings are fantastic if you fry them up in about a 320 degree pan of oil until they're nice and crispy, remove them, salt them up really good, and you could use this as a garnish or a snack. So for this dish, the asparagus is going to be roasted. So we're just gonna lay them flat on a pan like this Take a little bit of that olive oil and save some for another portion of the dish. Uh, a little bit of the kosher salt and some black pepper. And then give that a good toss in the oil. Make sure it's all covered with the seasonings. And reserve that for later when you put the chicken into the oven. Now we're going to toast the orzo pasta. So toasting pasta results in a very nutty pasta, gives it a really good color. The olive oil into the orzo pasta and mix it around until it's nice and coated. And then at that point, we're just gonna place it onto a flat baking pan and level it out until it's one layer. And again, we're gonna toast this off in about a 325 degree oven um, for about eight to 10 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. So let's put that in the oven. So two other things that we will do before the chicken gets onto the board is the arugula. I love arugula, has a little bit of a bitterness to it, uh, but almost has like a lemoniness to it as well. So this we're just gonna chop up and then we're gonna reserve it for later when we cook the orzo. Uh, at the final stage, we're gonna add the arugula and some Parmesan cheese. So for right now, all we're going to do is just chop up the arugula to get it a little bit smaller. I use the stems and everything. The stems are real tender. And then we're going to put that back into the container. Then the final step before the chicken is the yellow tomato. Yellow tomatoes is just going to add an accent to the roasted asparagus that we're doing. So we're just going to break these down into a little bit smaller pieces. and then you can put them back into their container. Now we're gonna use this board for the chicken breast. We'll take it out of the container. If you see any of this exterior fat or cartilage or anything, what you wanna do is just trim it up without wasting any of the breast meat. And then kind of do a once over and make sure there's no other trimmings that you have to do. At this point, you could put saran wrap over it 
and then you could pound it with a mallet. What you're trying to accomplish is to get the chicken breast even across as far as thickness, because you can see on this end it's thin, and then on this end it's thick. I don't prefer to do it that way. I actually prefer to make cutlets out of it. So what I do is I find the straightest edge, which is this one right here, and I put it on the edge of the cutting board, so that way it makes it a little bit easier. And basically I'm just taking the knife and slicing it straight in half, making sure that you're not angling your knife, just keep it nice and straight so you're not cutting yourself. And at this point, this would be called butterflying the chicken if I left it intact. I'm not gonna leave it intact for this dish, I'm gonna cut it straight across. So now we have even thickness throughout. Now take the prosciutto, take a clean piece of saran wrap, spread out the prosciutto so there's no holes or gaps anywhere. We'll give you enough prosciutto so that you can encase the entire chicken. So once you have that down onto the saran wrap, then we'll take our chicken and alternate how they're laid down. So opposites. And we'll put some of that pesto on there. And pesto is typically made from basil. This one, however, is made from sun-dried tomatoes. And typically pestos have pine nuts. This one does not. So technically it is called a pisto. And it has other ingredients like Parmesan cheese, extra virgin olive oil, shallots, garlic. And then season it with a little salt and pepper. And then we're going to wrap this up. So you pull up with the saran wrap and fold down and you're almost creating a pinwheel as you roll it. And then once you get to the end, you can pull your top saran wrap so it's tight and then roll the chicken and the prosciutto all the way to the end. And to get it even tighter is to roll the ends and you can do it in opposite directions. Until it's nice and tight. At this point, you could sear it if you wanted to. What we're gonna do is roast it off in the oven as well as the asparagus at the same time. So let's get it out of the saran wrap. Cut off the ends. And then gently remove it from its saran wrap. Let's put a little bit of oil on there so it attracts the heat and gets that nice and crisp. And then we'll put our asparagus into the same pan and into the oven. I took the toasted orzo out of the oven and let it cool for a little bit. Now we have our water boiling. Anytime you're cooking pasta, you wanna make sure that the water tastes like the ocean in a sense because you wanna impart a lot of flavor into that pasta. So you have to salt it pretty heavily. There's a misconception that if you add oil to water, it keeps the noodles separate. But when you think about it, once you add oil to water to boil pasta, where does the oil go? It goes to the top. So there is a reason for the oil, but unfortunately it's not to separate the noodles or pasta from each other. It actually stops the water from boiling over, kind of creates a shield at the top of the water. So let's add our pasta and cook it just like we would normally. So I removed the asparagus from the oven because they're about 75% of the way done. We're gonna take our tomatoes and put them on top. Once the chicken is done, we'll remove the chicken from the oven and then we'll put this back in just for a quick reheat. So right before plate up, I've taken half of the balsamic and I put it into a pot over low heat. I'm gonna take this butter and I'm gonna place it into the balsamic that's on the heat and slowly swirl it to incorporate the butter but keep it emulsified. So here we've drained our orzo. We're gonna put it back into the pot while it's still hot. Let's add our arugula, Parmesan cheese, and the last little bit of that olive oil, as well as some kosher salt and black pepper. And keep that warm for the plate-up. And so for the chicken, once you remove it from the oven, just make sure when you insert a thermometer into the center of it. So again, this tip has got to be into the center of the thickest part. So we'll go straight for the middle and it's got to read 165 degrees. This is that balsamic syrup that we put that little cube of butter in, heated it just a little bit and kept swirling it around. So we'll put a little of that sauce down. 
then take the back of your spoon and go towards the outer edge of the plate. And what I like to do is give it different heights to make it look like it's little stair steps. So the first one is gonna be really small. If you were to cut this in half, just go to one side or the other and cut the other one just a little bit smaller. We'll take our chicken wrapped with prosciutto and put those right into that swoop. And then we'll take the asparagus and do a little crisscross pattern. And then those warm tomatoes right on top. If you have a little additional Parmesan cheese, you could sprinkle it on top of the toasted orzo pasta. If you have a little additional of the balsamic sauce, you could just give it a little dots 